I'm Dr. Sherman Silber. I've been exploring Africa for the last 25 years, and I'm always amazed how it extends my life because it makes my conscious awareness more intense, and life is just conscious awareness. And the more intense and the more aware we are, the longer our life virtually. So come with me to Africa again, where I explore reflections of these beautiful wild animals as they roam through their wilderness unencumbered by civilization and we'll even look at their reproductive habits which may be a little bit humorous but the beauty just transcends my everyday life and I hope it will lengthen your life. Waking up at dawn at the green hills of Africa reminds me of Ernest Hemingway, who said that sometimes just being there, being in a place and feeling its adventure competes quite favorably with a story. So all we're going to do is be in Africa and feel and reflect what life is about, and that will be better than any story I could tell you. We fly first to the Okavanga Delta into Botswana, green, beautiful, flat country, and dawn on the Okavanga has its reflections like all of Africa that reverberate in our brain over and over again. From the flowers that open up during the day and close at night, and to the magenta actual sunsets, the bird life wildly flying around, and then all of a sudden coming across a herd of elephants coming out of nowhere. These pictures were all taken with my iPhone because I broke my camera the second day I was in Africa. So if you can imagine the reality of this experience, this video you're about to see is all with an iPhone. The elephants are crossing right in front of us, and the babies have to lift up their trunks just to breathe. Hundreds of elephants, as though we didn't even exist, crossing in front of us in this shallow marsh. Now on to the Zambezi River, the mightiest river in Africa, actually. And in a little cubby way, we find elephants playing with themselves, cavorting. And again, all I had was an iPhone. So we're right next to these elephants. We're not National Geographic photographers. We're just at one with this wilderness, which increases our conscious awareness and life is only consciousness. And the more conscious we are, the longer is our life. Look at these elephants, looking at themselves as they're drinking water, looking in the mirror as their trunks come down to the water but the reflections of their trunks come up to meet their actual trunk at the surface of the water. They've had enough to drink, but they leave their reflection indelibly. And a herd of elephants comes passing by a drier area, and you can see their reflections as the baby crosses the pond. A happy family, peaceful and quiet, separated from the daily staccato of our rhythm and life. Look at the trunk coming down to meet its reflection as it comes up. Zebras are in a different hole, again doubling their beauty. You see two zebras for the price of one. And as he puts his head down to drink, the other head, its reflection, comes up to meet him. Who is the real zebra? The one who's on pop or the reflection? Next come the wildebeests, kind of ugly animals, but uh, strikingly beautiful in that ugly way. And then the most spectacular hyena I've ever seen. This hyena is reflecting who he is, and his reflection is a perfect image of who he is from bottom up. Who am I, the reflection or me? And the lion asks the same question. And the flamingos have been due to ask this question every single day. Who are we? As we reach down into our reflection deeply to pick up shrimp from the bottom of the water, 
from the bottom of that famous lake in Dutu, who are we? Well, we're all about reproduction. That's what life really is. And I'm amazed by this elephant and the variety of reproductive organs that you see in the wild that are just striking to a urologist like me. It seems like it could just as easily be a trunk. But it's all designed to bring DNA into the future generations, to take care of babies, to have babies, their babies to grow up and have babies, and to take care of each other. Even these Cape buffaloes have enormous reproductive uh, capacity and make many more Cape buffaloes. But we have to fight, unfortunately, because of testosterone. That fight determines which male has the biggest testicle and the most testosterone, and therefore the highest sperm. And sperm competition determines and makes sure that there will always be reproduction going on in future generations. This horny male, this beautiful male, his color is being created by the testosterone, which makes him stronger. These hyenas look the same, whether they're male or female. Some people think they're ugly, I think they're beautiful, but the male and the female both have penises and all look like each other. This male may be protecting the young, but really he's also protecting his whole harem because if another male comes in and kills him, that male will kill all the young and then mate with the females. So it's not as though the lions or nature always follow a beautiful moral path or live by the rules of Aristotle. They live by the rules of the wild that evolved over time. Now, this male really feels testosterone strongly, and he is really ready to mate. But the female is not ready to mate yet. She gives him a hard time. He seems so forlorn. He's tried twice and failed so far, and he's very horny. His testosterone is sky high, but her estrogen isn't up, and she's just not ready yet. So he tries and tries, but... She's not ready, and he gives up. But this male succeeded. His patience finally wore off. And they have sex every five minutes until she's inseminated enough to be fertile. And meanwhile, the mighty dung beetle rules the Serengeti. So these cheetahs are now hunting Tommies while wildebeest that they can't capture are seen in the foreground or in the background uh, migrating. The cheetah has to be very, very stealthy. It's not just speed that gets his Tommy. It's also his ability to sneak up and not use his speed until he's close enough that he can actually catch him. And he does catch him. The cheetah will be running 70 miles an hour and can easily outrun the Tommy, but the Tommy can run much farther than the cheetah. So if the cheetah didn't sneak up on it, the Tommy would have outrun him anyway. So here's a family of cheetahs just deciding to watch. They're always looking for possible food. And while they're looking for the food, the cubs will play. And they actually have a very happy little family life. Even though there's no male, it's only a matriarchal system. The male just comes in to inseminate. But the cubs and the mothers have fun playing with each other, all the while looking for Tommies or gazelles. They're practicing for future hunts. Their whole life depends upon this ability to sneak up on the prey and then to, at the last moment, outrun the prey. This family actually posed for us, surprisingly. And finally, uh, they came curious enough to approach our vehicle. I mean, we, this is all iPhone photography, by the way. I'll remind you that uh, this is a casual sort of family trip, not a National Geographic expedition. And so this is all pictures with an iPhone. That's all I had because I broke my good camera. These cubs are in a playful mood and weren't going to bother us. We came very close to some white rhinos that are very, very rare, just resting, not doing anything. These animals are so terribly endangered, there are very few left. And then we came across a very rare serval cat. This is extremely uncommon to see in the wild. 
such beautiful coloring of this animal while he was seeking to hunt. And painted dogs on a hunt, the most intelligent hunters probably in all of Africa. Some people call them wild dogs. And then a leopard was hunting during the day, which is very rare to see. It's very unusual and beautiful to see this spotted animal actually hunting during the day. Well, so we return to camp now, having been excited by the reality of life, the variety of life, maybe the unfairness of life in Africa, the bestiality, the beauty, the ugliness, and the wildness of life really increase our consciousness. And in fact, that's what our life is all about, increasing our consciousness.